Hello, I'm Archit Sashadri, Atlanta Bureau Chief with Next Star Media Group. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome to the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series from the studios of Georgia Public Broadcasting here in Atlanta. This is the general election debate among the candidates for the Attorney General's race. So let's meet our candidates for this debate. They are in alphabetical order. Chris Carr, a Republican, is the incumbent Attorney General for the state of Georgia. Next, we have Martin Cowan, a Libertarian, a former associate pro judge and last but not least Jen Jordan a Democrat who is currently serving as the Georgia State Senator for District 6. Now let's meet our panelists. We have Jill Nolan covering state and local politics for Georgia Recorder and Rose Scott is the host of WABE's Closer Look with Rose Scott. For complete rules on today's debate you can visit the Atlanta Press Club website that is atlantapressclub.org slash debates. To start the debate, each candidate will be asked one question. Candidates have nine, 60 seconds to answer each question. Jill Nolan, you have the first question to Jen Jordan. Thank you. And first of all, thank you all for being here today. Um, Senator Jordan, uh, you have said that if elected, you would not use state resources to defend the state's abortion law that took effect after the, after the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. Some have argued it's the AG's job to represent the state in court, even if you don't personally support the law in question. What is your response to this criticism? Yeah, you know, I believe in enforcing all state laws, but my primary obligation is to enforce our state's constitution. Um, that's the oath that I took as a lawyer and as an elected official. And when there is a conflict between the two, the constitution controls. So that's why when I talk about not defending the law, what I do talk about is that I would challenge it in court because I think that is the attorney general's job. Rose Scott, it's your turn to ask a question now to Martin Cowan. Thank you. Mr. Cowan, your two opponents are on opposite sides of Georgia's abortion law, which, as you know, prohibits most abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. If elected as Georgia's next attorney general, is this a law you would defend as constitutional or not? I have always supported Roe versus Wade, and I still support Roe versus Wade. I was greatly disappointed in the United States Supreme Court decision. Uh, I particularly objected to their saying it was a poorly written decision. I always thought it was a magnificent, uh, reasoned, uh, measured, measured um, decision. Uh, I am on Jen uh, Jordan, Senator Jordan's side on this, uh, but I would use the phrase prosecutorial discretion. That is a loophole for any prosecutor through which you could drive a truck. And I could promise you my prosecutorial discretion would be uh, exercised in not prosecuting doctors and, uh, and patients who uh, were unfortunate enough to have to deal with that very difficult decision. Uh, there are many other things that the Attorney General's office does and can do, and if one of my uh, associates thought that it was appropriate to do that, I'd send them to a Georgia prison, for example, to prosecute somebody who'd been murdered in prison, which I care about also very deeply. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jill, you get the last question in this round for Chris Carr. Uh, Attorney General Carr, uh, the Atlanta Journal Constitution and Kaiser Health News reported today that you've accepted $70,000 from company executives with Centene, which is a vendor that has been accused of inflating drug costs in Georgia's Medicaid program. A settlement, a settlement will likely be reached in Georgia, which will go through your office. Do you think there's a conflict of interest? Why or why not? Well, I think, well, first of all, let me thank the Atlanta Press Club for hosting this debate. Truly appreciate it. Thank you for having us candidates who are here. Let me start one from a campaign perspective. I've done everything above board legally, ethically, and honestly. When we uh, receive campaign contributions, we report those, which is how the media knows that we receive campaign contributions uh, from anybody. From a legal perspective, we look at the facts and the law. My one goal as attorney general is to always vigorously defend our client, the agencies that, is, that are the state agencies, but most importantly, uh, the people uh, of our state. But what I think this really does at the end of the day, I'm proud of the record that I have and I've put together for the last six years. Serving as attorney general, uh, I've worked with Governor Deal at Economic Development. I'm proud that I am a rule of law attorney general, but also pro-business. I, I truly believe in uh, the power of the free enterprise system and I'm proud of what we've done over the past six years. Thank you so much. That concludes the first round of the debate. The candidates will now ask a question to an opponent of their choice, so be specific. Each candidate will have 30 seconds to ask the question, 60 seconds to respond, and the candidate who asks the question will have a 30-second time for rebuttal. 
by random selection, Martin Cowan, you may ask the first question. Thank you. My question is for Senator Jen Jordan. If, the, if a governor of Georgia claimed public health authority to confine all unvaccinated people to their homes or to remove them to some kind of camp, will you, just following orders, enforce that order? Thank you. Thank you for the question. I think it's important to understand with respect to the attorney general that the attorney general is supposed to be an independent constitutional officer from the governor and is supposed to serve um, as a check on the governor. Um, my obligation will always be to the people of this state. And while obviously you wanna do what you can in terms of representing the executive or giving them advice, at the end of the day, if the governor wants to violate the rights of the people of this state, um, then clearly Clearly, I would stand in the breach and not allow that. Martin, would you like to rebut? You have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. I'm very glad to hear that she would oppose putting people, unvaccinated people, in concentration camps, uh, and I'm delighted to hear the answer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chris Carr, you get the next question. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Mr. Cowan. Uh, Mr. Cowan, as Attorney General, I've acted routinely to protect the rights of Georgians from federal overreach under the Biden administration. I joined other states in suing President Biden over his executive order to stop construction on the much needed Keystone Pipeline. Would you have supported my action to fight for energy independence and the free market? I hate to be asked a question to which I can say, I admire what you have done, General Carr. And so my answer is, I very much appreciate the lawsuits that the current uh, Attorney General has filed against the federal government. Boy, is that needed. And I'm so glad that that's happening here in Georgia and in Florida and other states around the country. So I, I have to, only, the only thing I can say is, congratulations on those lawsuits. I'm totally in favor of freeing up the um, Keystone Pipeline, and I want that federal government stopped in its tracks. Thank you. Chris, would you like to read about 30 seconds? Yeah, well, as Attorney General, I appreciate the answer from Mr. Cowan because I've tried to protect lives, livelihoods, and liberty over the past six years. Joe Biden has gone beyond his constitutional powers in stopping the Keystone Pipeline, the kind of investment that we need to restore American independent, energy independence. In fighting for the Constitution, I'm fighting for American jobs lower gas prices, and less reliance on evil regimes that hate us. My Democratic opponent, however, would side with Biden and the extremists that have gotten us in this mess. Thank you, Chris, for that. And Jen Jordan, you get the final question in this round. Yes, this question is to Mr. Carr. Mr. Carr, while attorneys general across the country are cracking down on a company named Centene for ripping off taxpayers and inflating drug prices, you have cozied up to the company and its executives taking approximately 75,000 in donations in this year alone. You even flew a private plane to St. Louis for a fundraiser at a baseball game with Centene executives, the very people that have allegedly defrauded the people of this state. My question is, Mr. Carr, will you continue to put your personal interest and the interest of your corporate donors ahead of the people of Georgia? Senator, I appreciate the question. It, it shows that you don't know what you're talking about. The facts are absolutely wrong. I've already addressed this with our first question. But what this really shows is two things. Number one, I believe in the power of the free enterprise system. I believe in the rule of law. Uh, folks in this state have supported me, whether they're companies, whether they're individuals. My opponent, however, calls corporations in Georgia predatory. She has a list of companies she wants to sue as the attorney general. Financial services, if you had anything to do with climate change, doctors, she wants to sue you. In addition, this is really, a, this is a, a desperate candidate. This is a desperate campaign who really didn't want to do the job she was elected to do in the legislature. She intentionally skipped 164 votes, including votes that would have stopped defunding the police, increased penalties for domestic abusers who use a gun, increased penalties for street racing, increasing funding for law enforcement, and voting to ensure that only U.S. citizens vote in our elections. Jen, would you like a 30-second rebuttal? Absolutely. I don't think that you should be lecturing me about not showing up. You need to ask the judges all over this state, including in Augusta and Macon, about how you and your office refuse to show up and prosecute some of the state's most dangerous criminals and street gangs. Ask my constituents about 
about how you didn't show up when we asked for help, when we learned that Sterigenics, a company in my district, was emitting uh, carcinogen, and, um, and we weren't even told about it. And ask the people of Brunswick how you didn't show up to do anything about the failure to prosecute the murderers of that young man, Ahmaud Aubrey, Thank until so the much. video was released the to the public. Thank, Thank you, Jen. Appreciate that. I'm going to round two. I'm gonna have to respond to that because she, she has made a lot of allegations. We there. will come back in round three for that, so we will certainly continue that. But in the interest of time, we're going to be continuing the debate. Now we move on to round three. Thank you for those of you just joining us. This is the general election debate between the candidates for attorney general. We will now go back to our panel to ask questions of the candidates of their choice until we run out of time. And as a point of moderator privilege, I may also interject to ask questions of the candidates. We'll also determine when a rebuttal is appropriate. Rose Scott, you get the first question in this round, our final round. Thank you. This question is for Senator Jordan. Senator, you stated that Georgia's abortion law, quote, runs afoul of the Georgia Constitution, close quote. Can you explain to voters, and you have said you want to challenge that, but under what provision of the state constitution would you be able to challenge that that you feel would be a successful challenge? Yeah, I appreciate the question. I think specifically what we have to look to is the right of privacy under Georgia's state constitution, which was first identified in 1905. I mean, the state of Georgia has had a right of privacy way before even the federal government or from the U.S. Supreme Court actually recognized it in Griswold versus Connecticut. And specifically with respect to Georgia, we ratified our constitution in 1982, the last time. And so the voters of this state have ratified a constitution with a right of privacy that had been recognized and that, had, and that voters knew encompassed the actual right um, to access abortion care or reproductive health care. So that's why I think that it runs afoul of the state constitution um, no matter what the Supreme Court did with respect to the reversal of Roe v. Wade. And that's also why I will make sure that I fight um, to make sure that the women of this state actually have their rights given back to them um, while the attorney general here that we have with us has done everything he could to make sure that they were stripped. Thank you so much. And well, Chris Carr, would you like yeah, to? A a absolutely, because I have stood up for the women of this state fighting to protect human trafficking victims, fighting to protect victims of gangs, uh, fighting those that are being uh, taken advantage of from an, a, an a, uh, elder abuse standpoint. But my opponent has skipped votes. She's made a living suing OBGYNs and healthcare clinics. She intentionally skipped a vote that would increase penalties for domestic abusers who use a gun. And she voted no to provide housing for pregnant women. Her, her, her uh, rhetoric doesn't match her actions. In addition, she also, here we are three okay, weeks before the election, and she doesn't know that the attorney general cannot sue the state of Georgia. It defends right. the state of Georgia. Thank you so much, Chris. We appreciate it. We're going to go to Jill for the next question for a candidate of your choice. All right, this question is for everyone, and we'll start with Attorney General Carr. Uh, what is your interpretation of Georgia's abortion law? Can pregnant women be prosecuted under HB 481? Uh, that's a, a great question, because the role of the attorney general is not to interpret the law. The role of the attorney general is to uphold the laws of this state. On day one in, in middle school uh, 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 political science, we know that there are three branches of government. The legislative branch makes the law. The executive branch upholds the law. The legislative branch interprets the law. Our job as the attorney general is to uphold the laws of the state. Now, if somebody doesn't like the law in this state, that's absolutely fine. But you run for the legislature, or in the case of Senator Jordan, you don't quit the legislature. You stay and you fight to change those laws. But you don't run for district attorney, and you certainly don't run for attorney general. Sorry, is it your opinion that women can be prosecuted under There is the law? absolutely nothing in the, the statute that would say a pregnant woman would be, pre would be prosecuted. The role of the attorney general's office, there is no authorization to prosecute. If anyone, it is, it's the providers that are, are provided for in this law, it would be up to the district attorneys uh, to make that determination. All right, let's go to Martin, same question, and then we'll go to Jen. One of the questions that I had intended to ask, but I decided not to, was uh, Georgia Republicans are on the whole and for the most part pro-life and pro-death penalty. And I was gonna ask if a Georgia General Assembly enacted a death penalty for doctors and their patients who uh, did abortions, would the Attorney General candidate support that? And of course, my answer would be, no, I don't support the death penalty for such people. I don't support the death penalty at all for that matter. Um, 
and I would strongly resist, strongly resist any prosecution of women or doctors for uh, violation of Roe versus Wade as it stood. Um, whether how that would be done, you know, would remain remain something for legal research. But I can promise you this: I would resist all prosecutions that were uh, of people who behaved in accordance with Roe versus Wade. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And Jen, final response. Yeah, the law absolutely allows for the prosecution of women, the prosecution of doctors and other healthcare providers, nurses, pharmacists, and the like. And specifically, what we're talking about is the personhood part of the bill, which now says that effectively. In an embryo is a person under Georgia law, um, meaning for all intents and purposes, including even the protections of the law. So if we think about that, when we think about the homicide statute, the manslaughter statute, the, you know, even child abuse, the child abuse statute, all of that would actually apply um, to an embryo and to a pregnant woman if she were to harm the embryo and actually maybe cause herself to have a miscarriage. I mean, it's ridiculous to say that this law does not um, let a prosecutor go after a woman because it's clear that it does. And I think that with respect to the governor and the attorney general, what they've been trying to do is not talk about that, not acknowledge it, because they know that if women All knew right. about it, that they would be voting for Democrats down the line. Thank you so much. She you invoked my name, so I have to say this. There's absolutely nothing. Georgia law says a woman can't be prosecuted for homicide if she obtains an abortion. The senator's wrong. She also knows that there's nothing in this bill that talks about what she just said. Courts interpret legislation as being the legislature intended to include the things it included and intended to keep out those that it didn't. And, and she knows that's not in here. I'm up protecting the women of this state from human trafficking, gangs, elder abuse. She's simply trying to scare them for crass politics. All right, well, thank you for those rebuttals and those points on that. Moving on, in the interest of time, my next topic to our, our, our guests is about public safety and crime. When it comes to gun control, when it comes to mass shootings, what will you do or continue to do to keep the streets of Georgia safer? And I'll start with Martin, then Jen, and then Chris. How will you keep the streets of Georgia safer? Well, as a libertarian, I'm opposed to all gun laws. I think it's a, the great tragedy in Uvalde, Texas, has shown uh, that 400 police officers will, just following orders, stand outside a school while 19 children and two adults are brutally murdered. Tragically, that terrible act, uh, but the, the failure of the police departments, four, almost 400 police officers, not to run in there and stop that, has damaged the reputations of police officers all over the country. Absolutely shocking. Um, my, my model for police uh, behavior is that of the Andy Griffith show. You all remember Sheriff Taylor, Sheriff Andy Taylor of Mayberry, North Carolina, who didn't ha have a gun, who'd walk around the streets being pleasant to his constituents. That's my model for police. I despise this new, let's all you know, military up and carry f enormous firearms for our, for our subjects. I'm opposed to that. All right, thank you so much, Jen. Same question to you. How will you keep the streets of Georgia safer if elected as attorney general? Look, every single person needs and deserves to feel safe in their communities, and I think that's the single most important function of government, and specifically with respect to gun laws. Um, I am a believer in the Second Amendment, and, um, and I believe that people should be able to own guns. Um, because specifically, I don't, I don't agree with picking and choosing which rights to enforce just based on, you know, the gender or the race of the person that the rights are supposed to protect. Look, in this country, and only this country, is the number one killer of children gun violence. I support safe storage. I support red flag laws. I support background checks to keep guns out of the hands of people who should not have them. As a mother, let me tell you something, I am furious furious. And as a senator, I know we can do better. And look, as the next attorney general, I'm going to work with local police departments and agencies to get illegal guns off the streets and out of violent street gangs. And okay. so with respect to the attorney general that we have right now, he has not been doing that and has been well, supporting bills that, to respond just in the that let illegal that. guns proliferate all thank over well, the state. Thank you, Jen. Chris, your, your quick response. Absolutely. On over the past six years, I've protected lives through our human trafficking unit, now through our gang unit. 
And I'm glad that we have this unit that can now go statewide because we have certain district attorneys that have endorsed my opponent, that have supported my opponent, that don't want to enforce certain laws. Well, now we can go into those communities like in Athens and make sure uh, that everybody is safe. And I want to welcome uh, my opponent, Senator Jordan, to the uh, discussion because she hasn't talked about crime yet. In fact, crime went up 60 percent in her own district in the short time she was in the legislature. She never said a word. She never offered any solutions. Again, she stands arm in arm with district attorneys that don't want to enforce the law. When she had a chance to vote to increase penalties on domestic abuse uh, uh, abusers when they used a weapon, she intentionally skipped that vote. So we've been having to clean up the mess from democratically run cities in this state. We've seen it around the country. I'm proud of the unit that we have, and we're going to continue to do it, including going after those who use illegal guns or illegally use them. And quick little rebuttal, Jen, did you have a comment to make? I saw you had a hand up. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous in terms of 60% in my district, 60% all over the state of Georgia on the attorney general's watch. It has been his job and he has failed miserably. All That's right. why I'm running for attorney general. The Thank people you, of Thank Georgia you. find it humorous to hear a Democrat blame a Republican for crime. All right, well, let's get back to our panelists to ask them one final question. Uh, Rose, quick last question before we get to closing statements. Yes, I want to ask a question to Attorney General Chris Carr because you've stated the AG's office office must defend state laws. But we have an instance here in Georgia, think back to then-Governor Sonny Perdue, A.G. Thurbert Baker, who refused to defend a, a law that he thought was unconstitutional. If, you, if your legal opinion is that a, a law is unconstitutional, will you still defend it? 30-second answer. The, the job of the Attorney General, it, by its constitution and statute, is to uphold the laws of this state. That's the role of the Attorney General. Again, the law could be changed. That's where you run for the legislature. That's where you, can, you could go and, and you can change that law. But no, that is the duty that is under the Constitution and statutes of this state, and I have proudly done that for the past six years. All right, thank you so much to our panelists. Now that is all the time that we have for questions. Each candidate will now have 60 seconds for a closing statement. Chris Carr, you get the first closing statement. Good luck. I appreciate the opportunity to serve as the Attorney General for the past six years. I've tried to protect lives, livelihoods, and liberty, standing up a first-of-its-kind historic human trafficking prosecution unit, first-of-its-kind historic gang prosecution unit that uh, is going to be responsible for making sure that all Georgians, no matter where you live, southwest Georgia, southwest Atlanta, Buckhead or Blairsville, you're safe fighting elder abuse and uh, fighting the opioid uh, cr uh, crisis and, and, and the problem that we've had all over the state of Georgia. I'm proud that we have protected livelihoods, fighting to keep the economy going, fighting to keep our schools open, and protecting liberty. The rule of law has to matter. I am proud to defend the Constitution of the United States, Constitution and laws of the state of Georgia, and to represent the people of this state. You can now vote uh, absentee ballot. You can vote early. And I ask for your vote for Attorney General. Thank you so much, Chris. Jen Jordan, you get 60 seconds for a closing statement. Yeah, I grew up poor in South Georgia, a place called Dodge County. I was raised by a single mother who was a hairdresser, and I went to law school because I wanted to help people just like the ones that I grew up with. And look, for the past 20 years, I've been able to do that, representing real people when they need it the most. Whether we're talking about going after predatory lenders who prey on people at their lowest and charge a thousand percent interest, or holding health insurance companies accountable when they refuse to pay for life-saving cancer treatments. But you know, my toughest cases were those where I represented victims of child sexual abuse. And that's why I fought so hard to pass legislation and laws to crack down on sexual predators to keep our children safe. Look, elections are referendums on the people who have the job. and that. That reality is that people in this state do not feel safe. Mr. Carr has had the job for six years and he's failed to do his job. He's actually sued the Biden administration more than he's gone after gangs or, or sex traffickers. Um, all right, that's all the time that we have for Jen. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. And Martin Cohen, you get the final closing statement. My name is Martin Cowan and I am the Libertarian candidate for Georgia Attorney General. I graduated from the University of Georgia Law School in 1975, over 47 years ago.
From 1964 until 1972, my father, Lindsey Cowan, was the dean of the University of Georgia Law School. And his appointment marked the beginning of the greatness that the University of Georgia Law School has become. Both of my opponents are graduates of the University of Georgia Law School. My father, Dean Lindsey Cowan, would be so proud that all three candidates for Georgia Attorney General are graduates of the University of Georgia Law School. I can guarantee you one thing. The next Attorney General for the state of Georgia shall be a graduate of the University of Georgia Law School. Go dogs! All right, thank you so much, Chris, Martin, and Jen. That concludes our debate for the Attorney General's race. We'd like to remind voters that Election Day is just three weeks away, Tuesday, November the 8th, and early voting has already kicked off with record numbers. Our thanks to all of our candidates, as well as our panelists and journalists. We'd also like to thank the Atlanta Press Club for arranging this debate. For more information about all the debates that they're hosting this election season, you can check them out on their Facebook page or atlantapressclub.org. I'm Archit Sashadri. Thank you so much for joining us for the Atlanta Press Club Louder Milk Young Debate Series. Have a great week. We'll see you soon.